Hi everyone, this is Eva at Industrial Sound Mechanics. For today's Q&A video, I have invited Dr. Alexei Pashkovsky, who will show us how the BSP-1200 ultrasonic processor configured in the flow-through mode is used for making nano emulsions. Alexei, could you tell us how um, water-soluble liquid and powdered nano emulsions are made with the BSP-1200? Thanks for this question, Eva. Hi everyone. Uh, this is our BSP-1200 ultrasonic liquid processor. It is configured in the flow-through mode and currently it includes all the peripheral items that are relevant to the nanomulsification process and I will mention them as we go through the process. Uh, this unit can uh, produce approximately 5 liters of nanoemulsion per hour at the concentration of up to 50 milligrams per milliliter of the bioactive material in it. So if a dose of the bioactive is 10 milligrams, which is typical for cannabis extracts, for example, <clears throat> then uh, in one hour you can make 25,000 doses with this unit. Uh, the unit can be used with a wide range of bioactives, uh, such as cannabis extracts, oil-soluble vitamins, pharmaceuticals, nutraceuticals. The only common requirement is that these bioactives um, have to be lipophilic or uh, soluble in oils. Um, the first decision that you have to make is what type of nano emulsion um, you'd like to make. You could make a liquid translucent nano emulsion, which then could be mixed into beverages and it will fully dissolve in the beverage and, and become transparent. Or you could be making a powdered nanoemulsion, which can then be added to um, other uh, precursors for beverages, for example, instant coffee or tea, including in the, in the tea bag, or to ground coffee that will later be brewed and then the powder mixed with it would come out of, of, of the mixture with the hot water. Uh, or um, powders can be compressed into tablets, which um, would quickly disintegrate in the mouth and dissolve in your saliva and uh, make, well, a saliva beverage, if you will, uh, reconstitute in the original liquid nanoemulsions and be absorbed that way. If you're going to be making a liquid translucent nanoemulsion, then in combination with the system, you'll be using a product called Nanostabilizer LT, which is uh, an all-in-one formulation of all, everything required uh, besides your cannabis extract or whatever bioactive you may have to create this formulation. So you will just need distilled water, um, nanostabilizer LT, and your bioactive material. If you're using a powdered nanoemulsion, then you will be using a different uh, type of nanostabilizer. It's called nanostabilizer LSO. So the standard tank that comes with the system is 25 liters, which means you can comfortably make about 20 liters at a time. Again, the productivity is five liters an hour, so if you're gonna be making 20 liters, it's gonna take you about four hours to process. Uh, for the specific amounts of cannabis extracts or other bioactives, uh, the, the amount of nanostabilizer LT, the amount of water that you would need to use for all the ratios, you can refer to uh, our uh, nanoemulsion processing guides, which are available on our web store, both for nanostabilizer LT and LSO. So, Let's focus on liquid translucent nanoemulsions first. So first you take an appropriate amount of nanostabilizer LT, place it in this beaker that will be on the magnetic stirrer with hot plate, heat it up to melt it, take the appropriate amount of um, your cannabis extract or another bioactive, put it in the same container and mix them together. They will melt together and form homogeneous oil phase. While this is happening, you can add distilled water to your tank and start mixing it with this magnetically coupled tank mixer. The tank mixer is coupled magnetically, so there's no shaft or anything that can contaminate your liquid. Uh, once the distilled water is in the tank, you set this to uh, a high speed and start mixing it. Uh, once you see the vortex and everything is being mixed, and once your oil phase is prepared and is in a liquid state, you pour the oil into the distilled water, 
and the mixer will pre-emulsify the whole formulation in such a way that no chunks or no pieces should remain floating on top or anywhere. Once the uh, product looks more or less homogeneous in the tank, you would open up this bottom valve, start the pump, and then the liquid will start to recirculate from the bottom of the tank through this reactor chamber and back to the top of the tank. Once the recirculation is happening, you can then turn on this chiller. The chiller will ensure that this ultrasonic transducer is not overheated and that the temperature of the liquid that you're processing is within the uh, correct temperature range. Typically, we recommend staying between 40 and 60 degrees Celsius for this liquid, which you can monitor using this thermometer uh, at the tank. Once your liquid is flowing, recirculating correctly, turn ultrasound on. When ultrasound uh, is on, the ultrasonic transducer supplies vibration to this barbell horn, which you don't see because uh, most of it is inside this flow cell or reactor chamber, as we call it. But inside the reactor chamber, this horn produces very high intensity ultrasonic vibrations, which creates something called uh, acoustic cavitation. Acoustic cavitation is the driving force behind uh, nanoemulsification processes. It creates very strong, very powerful microjets, which in turn create very strong shear forces that break up all the droplets into nano-sized droplets. The liquid will recirculate through this active zone in the reactor chamber and gently mix in the tank. And basically once that process starts, you can um, just let it happen. Uh, what you could do is watch this liquid either through this hose or you can incorporate a side glass or take samples out of the tank every once in a while. And what you should be noticing is, depending on the amount uh, that you're processing, if it's five liters, then after about one hour, if it's 10 liters, then after about two hours and so on, uh, you should start noticing that the liquid is becoming clear. Uh, once you can see through this hose, especially if you have like a laser pointer and you can point uh, this laser beam back on at yourself, you should be able to start seeing a dot, not a scattered light, but but a dot. When once you see the dot and once you can clearly see light through this hose, that typically means that the process is done. When the process is done, you stop ultrasound, stop the pump reverse its direction, start it up again, that will drain all of these lines back into the tank. Once you can see that this tube uh, has been purged, you stop the pump, disconnect this bottom fitting from the reactor chamber, reverse the, the pump again so that it will pump in the forward direction again, connect this fitting to the fitting on this uh, sterilizing filter. This is a 220 nanometer uh, pore size filter that will sterilize your nano emulsion after it's made. Once this is connected, you have your product container. You will start up this pump, slow it down first, start it up, and slowly pass all of your nano emulsion into the finished product container. Once that's done, close the, the product container, which should be pre sterilized, and now you're done. Now, if you're making a powdered nanoemulsion, the process will be mostly the same, except, first of all, you'll be using a different nanostabilizer. This is nanostabilizer LSO. And then the steps will be a little different. There's going to be no pre-mixing. You add distilled water to the tank. Then you add the appropriate amount of nanostabilizer LSO to the tank. Make sure that the mixer is on and at a high um, RPM setting. Make sure that the nanostabilizer also is nicely dispersed in there, no chunks floating, nothing floating on top, and you can see some vortex. Once that's done, take your cannabis extract or whatever bioactive you may have, melt it, pour the appropriate amount into the water with nanostabilizer LSO. Make sure that that is properly dispersed. After that, again, open the bottom valve, start up the pump, pump will start recirculating the liquid through this reactor chamber and back into the tank. 
start up this chiller. Once the chiller is on, the transducer is being cooled, the reactor chamber is being cooled in, via this jacket. Turn ultrasound on and give it about the same amount of time. An hour for five liters, two hours for 10 liters, and so on, four hours for 20 liters. Um, the difference between nanoemulsions made with nanostabilizer LSO and LT is that nanostabilizer LSO will not lead to uh, translucent nanoemulsions. This will remain milky white. So you can't really use your eyes and rely on translucency to understand when the process is finished. Ideally, you would have a droplet size uh, analysis equipment, something like a dynamic light scattering uh, device. If you don't have access to that, you could just go by time. Uh, five liters an hour, after that stop the process, reverse the pump, collect everything into the tank, disconnect this fitting again, use this other filter, this is a 1.2 micron filter. Once you connect that, Reverse the pump again, make it pump in the forward direction, slow it down, collect the nano emulsion in your finished product container, and you're done. The main advantage of uh, nanostabilizer LSO nano emulsions is that they can be dried, uh, for example, using a spray dryer. No additional excipients, binders, or anything else need to be added to that nano emulsion. Nanostabilizer LSO already contains everything necessary, so once you dry that nano emulsion, you will have a powder uh, which uh, can be placed back into water where it will dissolve and reconstitute in the original nanomulsion where uh, it came from. Uh, it's also important to mention the droplet sizes because that is the main parameter of the nanomulsion that speaks to its quality, stability, bioavailability, and the onset of action. Nano emulsions made with nanostabilizer LT, the translucent liquid ones, typically have median droplet sizes by volume distribution between 25 and 30 nanometers. This is a very small droplet size which is responsible for its translucency and extremely high performance in terms of bioavailability and the onset of action. Nanostabilizer LSO nano emulsions, when you first make them, typically have droplet sizes in the vicinity of 150, 170 nanometers. Once you dry them, make powders out of them, reconstitute them back into liquid nanoemulsions, the droplet size tends to go up slightly, but it should still be under 200 nanometers, which is still a very um, high quality nanoemulsion. And so this is the basic overview of how you would make translucent liquid nanoemulsions or powdered nanoemulsions using nanostabilizer LT, nanostabilizer LSO, in combination with this turnkey uh, bench scale ultrasonic processor, BSP-1200. Thanks for that overview, Alexi. And thank you everyone for watching. If you would like to reach us, you can contact us through our website, soundmechanics.com, or you can email us at contact at soundmechanics.com. Have a great day.